Hello chess fans, welcome back to 101 Ways to Win or Lose a Game of Chess. I'm your host, Onyx Chess, and today we will resume our talks on imbalances. Now, uh, today we're going to cover material, and uh, we're going to find something that's really nothing new. And what we're going to find is the same Cochrane's game that uh, we reviewed um, in the King Safety analysis. Now, this is a different game. But we're going to find those exact same themes really play out where uh, White says, hey, have a piece. I'll take a pawn. I'll take your king safety. And you take a piece. All right. So, so White here is basically giving a piece for two pawns at this point. And, uh, you know, may the best idea, may the best argument win. Black says that's good compensation. White says that's good compensation. They play the game to argue that very point. Now, in the Cochrane, as we know, uh, the knight on f6 just really can't take that pawn. It's uh, immediately losing after queen h5 check, where in all variations, the queen will come to d5, uh, usually with check and take the knight off after something like this. Uh, Maybe you could talk about the king here, uh, but we're going to get into completely acceptable, uh, again, dominant and lost positions for black in every variation. So, uh, black cannot take that pawn. However, black actually has something different than we saw in the king balance, uh, in, uh, the king safety imbalances, uh, lecture where we see actually, you know, black play c6 here, where, um, this shot is no longer possible. So, you know, we do want to always respect and observe and apply and adjudicate and understand uh, the imbalances in, in, in what they're doing, what they're saying, what they're indicating. Um, but again, only as far as the tactics allow uh, without that D5 square available after Queen A5 check. Uh, we have to realize that our d4 pawn uh, is up for grabs at this point. Okay, so much has changed in this position. All right, so now White's task to play a completely new line. Okay, and White comes up with simply protect the pawn. White wants to do something more active because... Uh, really, this isn't just going to be a talk on material. It's We're going to cover initiative and material in this exact same lecture because they're often related. Often the material balance uh, needs to be justified with initiative. Very little else is going to justify allowing a material imbalance. So we're going to do them both here, and, and they're usually part and parcel now that's not always but usually that's the case if if uh, material is uh, on the, the 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 table to be discussed often initiative is as well so here white wants to do something more active white wants to make black more reactive white really wants to uh, you know create some problems in black's camp and not allow black to uh, consolidate the material imbalance to where uh, black can move on to hopefully one end game. Okay, black uh, is a little bit, I think, happy with d3 here. All right, so, you know, as white, white seeing, you know, c6 almost for the first time, uh, says, hey, I mean, you got to do what you got. You got to defend that pawn. You know, uh, the idea of f3 is a little bit questionable simply because the queen often uh, is going to use... Uh, that d1 h5 diagonal. All right. So, um, that was White's resolution to the issue. Black takes the tempo to, to get his king uh, one more step safer to unimpeachable. And White just begins pressure, preparing f4. Uh, and, you know, hopefully a dominant attack that will hopefully... Uh, at least leave, you know, 8 if not 11 points uh, completely useless and quarantined on the wrong side of the board. Um, Alright, so 
again black takes another step to resolving his king safety imbalance now uh, he's nearly manually castled and things are looking okay for black but once again when you've got that initiative when you're the one pulling levers when you're the one uh dictating the flow of traffic imposing threats and yeah you no know, causing tactical concerns your clock's gonna be nice okay your opponent's clock probably not so much so black has to play careful here okay and you know the, the time will come off the clock a little bit um so here you know white's asked which pawn are you going to take back with white just says you know let's go ahead and take back with the deep on several reasons if we can ever manage to put a rook on this file there's a little shot there something like that uh even in variations where uh some trading goes on on the f6 square um again that uh a, a, a d8 square could be uh, a vulnerable even with the queen on it like this so uh, that's one consideration but i think the more fundamental one is just to say uh, that the pawn would be more backwards if we had taken with the f pawn okay uh I, I i guess i guess it was not backwards i guess but it's 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 too slow i can't deal with having to you know defend pawns right now he's he's really got to be posing challenges to to, to, to black's camp all right but i think the main idea here is actually just to keep uh the f file closed okay i think black would be happy to uh trade off that rook i think black would be more than happy uh right now uh white's rook is actually um threatening to lift that 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 rook is you know threatening to support uh, a push on f5 where then uh e6 is very much on the table and at a glance it really doesn't seem like e f5 can really be stopped easily at all uh, uh you know the bishop to block doesn't work this bishop would simply chop it off so you know white is really just focusing on the spatial and in advantage and initiative advantage here and that's what white's trying to really you know pile on uh, and hopefully overwhelm black's position so we're talking material versus initiative here kind of a thing okay so um you know white wants to be active once again threatening mate uh mate tricks and traps uh here this is very cool business because black really has to here at this point now uh either play uh one of those two pawns up further weakening his uh pawn structure around his king so uh where he had played for king balance now it's a little bit unclear if he's actually uh, achieved king safety at all uh black chooses h6 and uh and of course by the way g6 allows interesting shots like that uh where there could be big problems in black's camp where if, if white can even manage to get one tempo uh it's going to be a mate in certain variations like that um that said there better be one otherwise uh white is actually going to be as slow to the game as black is and black would equalize and uh probably come back uh with a vengeance so uh long story short you know white's just again playing on the theme here now uh this allows again more initiative another shot okay so now we're, we're once again uh threatening tricks and traps and uh i guess the, the 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 threat here is is basically you know queen check where the king would uh pop out all right maybe bishop to g6 okay saying check to the king okay only move king e6 queen would take the pawn and and then or you know maybe you, know, you could look but you know worst case scenario queen takes that pawn and black's king uh, will have some explaining to do uh immediately uh threats being of course even just f5 and e6 after king goes there check and uh this could be you know big trouble for black it just you get the sense that white has 
achieved compensation for the night. Uh, that was the plan. Uh, White was a little tired at this point. He probably shouldn't have started this game. Uh, King Moose, you know, Queen, pardon me. Black comes to displace the Queen, uh, bring the defender back. Um, yeah, no, but this is, this is, you know, trappy. But White really wasn't worried about the trap and perhaps uh, White should have uh, not played so tired. Um, you know, again, just closing the gap, taking space again, F5 being allowed with ease. You know, this kind of stuff is deadly for kings, you know. Um, you know, black threatens the queen and, and here's simply a bishop to C4 wins outright. Uh, but white just immediately without even thinking and plenty of time on the clock uh, plays e6 check uh, traps his queen and goes on to actually lose this game uh, because just simple basic tactics were missed uh, white just you know snapped off e6 check haha uh, that's it you know and, and and the idea was king pops back there that was the idea and then you know the, the pawn would fall that was the idea um, it did not go that way at all. Uh, of course, um, or pardon me, even just queen takes rook check. Okay, but of course the, the king moves uh, to f6. And white realizes that, yikes, mistakes were made. And uh, there's no coming back from that. White may as well resign. Uh, what are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, up to, uh, it should be on the record, up until move 16, E6, check. This is thoroughly winning in all variations. Um, White's king is safe on all diagonals, on all rows, everything, files, everything. There's not a threat around the king. Uh, this is just a monstrous attack between uh, coordinated onslaught between some far too advanced and far too solid pawns uh, in tandem with a bishop and a rook and a queen and a passer for good measure that promises to come to e6 in the near future making all kinds of further issues available in black's camp so uh, this is most definitely absolutely winning for white um, you know we don't always play our best, I guess. Uh, and that might be uh, a lesson for another day. We might pull up this same game here and really get into the psychology behind snap and E6 check right quick. Uh, with, with having, you know, time on the clock and with being, you know, completely ahead and comfortable with the position to just, you know, overlook that and to um, really disrespect the tactics in the position like that and to think that you can get away with that uh it's it's uh yeah not uh <laughs> it's not gonna go so you know in, in the spirit of chess uh, i suppose we would look at e6 check uh king to f6 as just beautiful like justice is restored in this universe you may not disrespect tactics okay we dream as far as tactics allow and no further so this is just i guess really just a little you know overview of material advantages and how they often translate to, to initiative and how that initiative can often translate to wins all right nothing big nothing bad just a quick little lecture on on these imbalances here this is onyx chess thank you for watching and may you see the board well and may your pieces find the best squares.